opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome to the show, everyone. This is the Journey Radio Show, and I'm your host, Jen Cruz. And hey, we're showing up as the She Squatchers, as we always do. So I've got my trusty teammates on the line. I've got Tammy Trichel. Hi, everybody. And I've got the birthday girl herself, Jenna Grover. Hey, Jenna. Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad to be back. I'm glad you're back, too. And it's Jenna's birthday. It is. I don't I, I'm, know. I'm sorry. I was waiting for the applause, but nothing happened. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday clap. I'm, try- yes, I'm trying to you. send up balloons, but I, don't, I know our listeners out there can't hear the balloons, but I'm sending balloons. Yes. So, so there you watching, are. They're beautiful and wonderful, and thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was Jennifer's, Jenna's birthday today. We went out for lunch, and everybody in the chat room is saying, happy birthday, Jenna, happy birthday, Jenna. So, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, and it was a wonderful day today. That's all I have to say about that, because I got to spend time with Jen. She had the best birthday date today. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. I, I it it yes. was me. So... <laughs> Anyway, we have a really awesome guest for you guys tonight. We've got Mike Ann joining us, and he's going to tell us all about his group and his adventures and looking for cryptids and how that's coming about with him. So, hey, Mike, are you there? I am. How are you doing this evening? And happy birthday, Jenna. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, Mike, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in the cryptid world? So I got into the cryptid world uh, in a very strange way. Um, I work in a, in a law enforcement capacity, and uh, I had talked to a gentleman about large cats in New York State. And he pretty much told me that they didn't exist. He worked for another agency. Um that uh, may do some environmental stuff. Let's just put it that way. And he said, no, I don't believe in the cats. However, when I was working down in Chautauqua County, I came across a lot of stuff that looked like Bigfoot. I put it away in the back of my head. Uh, A couple of years later, I was uh, giving a friend of mine a hard time. I ended up getting on and Googling Bigfoot sightings in my county. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how this journey goes for me, uh, I found a local uh, newspaper article right down the street from me with a sighting by two fishermen on a small lake. So I started doing some more digging around. Um, I was out with some surgery, and I found the Chautauqua Lake uh, Bigfoot Festival that Peter Weimer puts on. So I grabbed my niece and nephew and I drove down and I'm like, I got to check this out. Something for the kids to do. It's a, you know, pretty drive. And while I was doing all the research, I came across uh, Ryan Reading's uh, YouTube channel and he's down in Chautauqua County. So two and two, this law enforcement official telling me about stuff that he'd seen, prints, calls he'd gone on. I'm like, all right, there's something down here. So let's go down to Chautauqua County. I run into Ryan. He was down at the event and he introduced me to Steve Calls. Uh, the Squatch Detective. Talked to Steve for a few minutes. Later on that day, uh, I got a friend's request from Steve. And next thing I know, he was asking me if I was up in the Adirondacks to join him for uh, a trip out in the woods to start doing some investigating. And he and I corresponded for a little bit. I joined him in the woods and uh, became part of his team. He then uh, 
took me down with him down to Pennsylvania. I met Eric Altman and the crew for Eric's uh, PA Bigfoot camping event and met some wonderful people down there, made some really good friends. And while I was down there, heard my first scream, um, which was kind of interesting. And when we walked out of the woods, we actually found a, an impression. I'm not going to say a print, but there were some gentlemen that had been around in the field for quite a bit uh, that were with me. Um, following along that summer, I was invited to, uh, uh, this is, goes on to the next summer. I was invited into a Nesra expedition and those guys were back there the original Bigfoot forums that were there at the event and got hooked up with Nesra. So now I was working with Steve, the guys in PA. And, and while I was with the Nesra guys, I came across that small trackway, big prints and little prints. And at the end of the trackway, I found some hair and I'm like, okay, I just keep stumbling across stuff that I can't explain. I took the hair back and gave it to a buddy of mine that's a, a biologist. He took it in, did some comparison, and he's like, I don't understand that. Uh, however, uh, with his family background and where he grew up, uh, he goes a lot to his native roots and all the stories he heard. And he travels the country doing some powwows at the time as well as doing his um, scientific stuff. So he's kind of on the border. So it gave us an excuse to get back out in the woods. And then Steve would bring me along and uh, to a lot of different locations. So absolutely amazing places in York and Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. I met a lot of cool people along the way. And every time I go to a different area with Steve or with myself, with my group. Um, so basically, uh, I used to make, uh, I still make knives and do tactical gear. And that's where Tactical Big Research came out. So I would travel with Steve while he was doing his things, and I would bring things along because we'd tell people, hey, if you're going in the woods, there's stuff you need. So that's where tactical Bigfoot research uh, came up. And then I picked up a couple other guys, and their backgrounds are military and law enforcement and science. So, again, it's, that's why we kind of went with the, the gear we're at. And then I got into the paranormal side and started doing uh, Where's My Sage with my co-host, Christy London, who's a, a psychic medium. So we do... Paranormal investigations, and I drag her along to do the the Bigfoot stuff. Well, that's all right up our alley. <laughs> well, of course, we're excited about that. How are you mixing those? Are you mixing paranormal investigations with Bigfoot? Uh, I wouldn't say we're mixing them together. We might mix some of the technology. Uh, so what some of our friends have used on their paranormal investigations Uh EMF meters, some of the flashlights, some of the cameras, we might pull over to the Bigfoot side. And then some of the thermal cameras and some of the other trip wires and other stuff that we would use out Bigfooting, we'll bring back the other way. And uh, also talking to some of the crypt wadded cryptid guys, uh, because I have a background as a recovery diver and an uh, underwater robot operator. So we're looking at how we can use some of that equipment as well uh around the lakes and swamps and ocean so that that's awesome. my background so so you are you using underwater cameras to, to uh we haven't as of yet uh but i have discussed with a couple of different folks different camera systems are using mm -hmm. uh kind of bounce some stuff off uh my friends, uh, I actually just got off the phone with somebody about maybe going out and doing some champ research uh, this summer. So we'd be looking at more underwater camera things. So nice. How long were you working with the underwater camera? I mean, how long were you a reco recovery dri driver? Diver. Eight, driver. 18, <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Uh, eight, 18 years. Uh, I worked as a, a search and rescue uh, recovery diver. For oh, agents. So I don't. I heard that. I, 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 I'm, I'm still active with it. I just don't dive anymore, uh, but I still uh, run robots and stuff. I think that's awesome. And I actually looked into becoming a recovery diver. So I think that's very awesome. It is. I have to, I have to mention my father-in-law used to do that. He used to um, help the fire department and he did some recovery in the water and I think he was worse off for it. So it really takes a special kind of person to get that. So if that's what you do, God bless you and hope you find everybody that you are looking for. Thanks. Actually, you know, I do it just to 
help bring closure to families. That's that's the best, the big thing. So, um, so that's that's where we've gone. So yeah, we we do a lot of uh, if we can find a location that we can do a bigfoot and we can hit a, a an investigation for you know a haunted location. Yeah, we're 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 grabbing that the best we can. So. Well, that's awesome. So, I, of course, we want to hear about your Bigfoot experiences, and you got any really good stories to share? Uh, I, I, every time I, I'm a big skeptic on the, on the thing, uh, but every time I get ready to walk away, something literally hits me in the face. Uh, so that first camping weekend um you know we heard the scream we were with a bunch of families i was staying with uh, or, or standing with uh, another investigator and we heard that scream we looked at each other like you do that nope did you do that nope and we started calling everybody else and like nope nobody did anything uh we got the group we had families with us we got everybody together circled up and i had everybody kind of scream out uh you know their own howl and you know kind of calm the families down a little bit when they did that we got some responses and then uh jay suggested it would be a great idea that we walk out of the woods with all our flashlights on and i thought yep that's a great thing to do um to calm the families down and as we did we set them up in a grid search pattern so lined everybody up and started walking out and across the trail here's a print going so not the way we walked up coming across so literally people had you know, got some book prints and things. And, uh, you know, the guys have been doing this for a while, got down, looked in the print. They're like, okay, it's not a double bear print. Everybody take pictures. We'll get everything we need to do. We wandered off. We found some more impressions. We kept walking. And we started with 15 people. Uh, about halfway through, you know, we're still moving. We're looking at things. Jay looks at me. And I look at him and, and Joe and a couple other guys. They're from Pennsylvania. And we're like, where'd everybody go? They up and went back to their cars. They left the four of us there. So we walked out. We had one small Seek thermal camera. Uh, we had a small, we had my uh, Bushnell night vision. And uh, as we're walking, um, it was, uh, I'm going to butcher Jay's name, uh, Jay Bochachin. But yeah, Chochen. I practice Jay's name about 30 times a day because it's the only name I really mess up on a daily basis. So Jay was with me. He had a thermal uh, Brian Parsons, um, Rick Turby, and, and Joe Baiello, and we're walking out, and we're all spread out, and we're walking down the path, and um, we're a good six feet apart from each other, and the next thing you know, we're all standing next to each other, and Brian goes, somebody feel like we're being watched, and I kind of felt that way, but I'm like, okay, yeah, it's 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 not there, and Jay pipes up, and I, my ears are shot from diving and other stuff, so I, occasionally I miss some of the little scrapes in the woods, and and Jay's like, yeah, something's been tracking us for about the last uh, five, six hundred yards down the road. And we're like, OK, now we've gone back then. And that's that's Eric, one of Eric Altman's uh, stopping grounds that he goes around. They've got a lot of activity out there. So that's that whole chestnut ridge. So that was one of my first ones. That was my I'm going out and buying a thermal camera. Uh, so I ended up getting one of those little seat cameras. Uh, we, they said, then I ended up going up with the Nestra expedition while up there, I out with one of the gentlemen and I'm with Mike and I'm like, Hey, we're going to bushwhack. We're not going to follow the trails in the area. We're not going to follow the deer trails. We're going off. So we went off, went through a stream, which he was not too happy about. So I knew I was going the right way because I'd never worked with the guy before. Um, so, you know, I never been in the area, so I want to make sure it wasn't seated. Um, I trust that guy in the woods now impeccably. Um, there's actually some of that footage will be coming out in a documentary very soon. Um, and stepping up over the creek and onto the bank, I noticed a small track, small impression. We're in the Adirondack State Forest. And the substrate up there, if you know, is, is very hard to get impressions. But we have one large impression, one small impression. So we tracked it. At the end of the impression, I found a tree that was ripped open, and it wasn't a bear claw. It wasn't a hatchet mark like you do to mark a tree. It was kind of pulled, so it was really interesting. And in that, I found a bunch of hair. That hair, of course, was you know taken on sample on on a, on a you know an action camera with my mic you know filming the whole thing. 
And we brought that back. We've turned it over to a lab and we're getting ready to send it out to uh, some folks on the West Coast just to take a look at what they think before we waste any money on DNA analysis. Um, so again, there's, there's another one. Uh, we saw something else in camera or more equipment come back. We're still going through. I've had other experiences with Knox. The paranormal stuff kicks in. And uh, I'm down in Chautauqua County. Uh, I had taken uh, my, my co-host, Christy, down there, Christy London. And we're working with Ryan reading. Uh, and we're just sitting around like campfire style, but with no campfire in a, in a parking lot. And out of nowhere, you heard a gibbon scream. Now, I know it's a gibbon sound scream because as a, a kid, as a teenager, I volunteered at the local zoo. In the summer, I worked in the mini zoo. And in the winter, I worked in the gift shop. And the gift shop, the way it was set up, sat in the monkey house. So I looked at the snakes in front of me. And to behind me were the great apes. So there was a chimp, orangutan, then the gibbons. And, you know, you get there at 7 o'clock in the morning. Nobody else is in a zoo. You could hear them screaming. You can hear the lions screaming because it's a small local regional zoo. So that love of animals, that, that big primate thing, I know it. You know, I, I did that till I was old enough to get, a, a, you know, a real job and, you know, start my, my teenage stuff. And it, so it, it gave me that experience. So hearing that. Christy's look on her face was just like because her back as to what it's at and after that given scream of course the owls kick in and some of the other stuff forward fast for a couple of years um, back with Steve we're up in the Adirondacks uh, I picked up a new thermal camera um, and we're sitting up on top I turned it off I've got the, the, the action camera going and action camera dies get ready to change batteries so I'm leaning over the top of his car um, he, another investigator in front using my night vision, Steve's trying to work with a 4k camera and a rock comes over the top of the car, hits me dead center in the forehead. What in the, so I look up, I'm like, okay, am I sitting underneath an acorn tree? Is it pine cones? I'm, I'm running through my head. I'm not thinking I'm getting hit. Another one comes over. Another one hits the side of the car and Steve's trying to come out and he's like, We're, we got, we got a rock throw. How can you explain this? I can't. So it's again, it's something that you check it off where it is, what time of the year it is. That particular location, Steve's talking about on multiple specials. That's where he's had his sighting. Other folks, I'm getting ready to invet, uh, talk to another uh, witness that was up in that area um, that had uh, an experience around his camp. So it, it's been a very interesting area. Um, there was, we were with a group up there that had a daylight sighting. I did not have a sighting. Um, so those things, as they come along, uh, we kind of pick them up and I, and I chalk them up. One summer I was working with, uh, with another, Jenna knows Teddy from, well, you guys were on Teddy's show. And that's what he was talking about. Uh, and uh, Ted and I were out with a couple other law enforcement officials at a, at a haunted house. So that's where they always mix together. This particular location, I've talked to individuals that spent time there as kids and saw stuff in the woods and don't ever want to go back to the house. Do not want to go in the house. I don't want to go into the house. It just, and I've been to some crazy places, just, just bad juju. Uh, but while we're walking along a field, along a swamp, one oh. of the gentlemen says, what, well, what do you got? Oh, no. See, now I want to know why you don't want to go in the house. Uh, it's a lot of dark energy. It's a lot of bad energy. Uh, they had somebody hang themselves in the, the shed on the property. Supposedly there's a child buried in there. I've watched investigators come out of the basement with uh, animal bones in their, hooked into their shoes. Um, there's just a lot of dark energy. Uh, I sent another psychic medium, borrowed one of my tactical flashlights. I used the flashlights that have the little buttons in the back. She's walking in with another medium. The flashlight turns on her back. Part. This is a flashlight I carry all the time. It just doesn't turn on. It's not a mag light where you're going to twist it. You've got to physically push the button. Um, talking to one individual that spent time there as a kid, very large, burly guy, is <laughs> has one of those jobs you got to have, you know, a lot of gumption. And he sat down and started to ball and shake and i watched the hair grow up on it in his arms 
saying about what he saw in that house as a, as a kid. Um, there's been a lot of investigation. I watched one guy go in there for an investigation, run out of the house, jump into the car, drive the driveways, you know, a couple hundred feet long and, and just leave a dust trail. And he was gone. I mean, just <laughs> like, nope. Um, I, I just, it's one of those places literally you get close to the house and you can just feel that it should be gone. Shouldn't be there anymore. But if you are a big paranormal person, go ahead and go. But it's one of those I places. I want to go now. <laughs> it, it's, 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 me into it. <laughs> it it's, you know, and I've been to places where people say, oh, there's a lot of, yeah. I, I literally, I get within five foot of that place and it's, it's like I'm hitting a wall. And it's just, you know, and it, it's, again, I take and document. What is it? How do I debunk it? I can't figure out. If there's extra wind coming in from the swamp or, or whatever, but you can, as soon as you hit it, and everybody that shows up on the, at the house for an investigation is has had that thing. So, like I said, we're walking out to the swamp. I'm with two guys that are sort of into the Bigfoot thing. They're they're with Steve. Uh, they're they're law enforcement officials. One guy's a complete skeptic. He's like, I got to use a tree. He steps into the woods. I keep walking past him. I just got a DSLR with me. It's the middle of the day. And he goes, it's here. And I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's there. And I can hear the change in his voice of, it's here. And he's trying to get out of the woods. And as he's trying to get out of the woods, you can hear something run off on two feet. And it's hard. And you can, and Teddy was there with us. I tried to run back with a camera. I can't get anything on it. I go back later. And with two other investigators, we're walking down. We get almost the same area. Boom, you can hear it on two feet run off in the swamps. There's local sightings. There's on BFRO. It's on the, It's in the historic from the town. Uh, Ted did a lot of research in, in, in that area. So it's it's one of those places you just kind of you, you, you check off. What do you got? And you, you know, you go back. Yeah, there's some bear in the area, but this is definitely on two feet. Uh, it's an interesting location. Two years apart, I found half parts of deer in a tree up there. So they're just little ones. You just, you just, again, you check and you you put it back and you go back. You know, was it kids? And again, you, you got to debunk. You know, was the kids putting things in a tree? But you still got the same back pelvis or something like that. You're finding in those trees and that distance apart. So, so those are some of my uh, my little excursions out and what I've come across uh, throughout our little trip. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Sometimes, you know, we, we have a background in paranormal investigating before we got into Bigfoot. So, of course, we get our ears perk up a little bit when we start hearing a little bit about that, too. So, where our interests are all over the place. Yeah, I, I mean, want to go. It, it, it really, it, it's, it's been on a few, the place has been on a few TV shows. Um so it, 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 yeah, it's 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 interesting location, you know. And, and like I said, when I got when I joined up with Steve, I also joined up with his extreme paranormal response team, which you know that had uh, UFO folks, that had Bigfoot people, it had the paranormal, you know, Jack Kenna, Steve, Stacy Horton, um, Tim and Tom Comwell, Michelle Wagner, who's another the Saratoga Spiritist. So we had a, a diverse, and then there was me as the what am I doing here kind of guy, but it was kind of cool at first to get along. And then I started seeing stuff that I can't explain, you know, and I went from like the first location was the Washington County jail and the guys, I, I spent the day going through the woods or going through the jail with, with uh, Mike Dolans and Brian McCulley that were on the demon files and watching Brian and Mike in dealing with what we were dealing with in the jail and what we were getting back in evidence. You're just, you know, and watching people put equipment together and watching, you know, doing the, the mag light thing and going, well, they're using my mag light. I know that's not altered. You know, here's the power sources. And, and that's my big thing when we want to do paranormal. I'm the I'm the debunker. Uh, I want to go through. I want to know where the electric box is. I want to know where the washer is. I want to know where the sump pump is. Uh, all that stuff before we sit down and investigate. So it was, it, it's kind of nice, the team that I started with. And like I said, now that I'm working with, with Christy and some other folks, it's uh it's been there, and I went from there to the Hinsdale House, which is, uh, I've been there six times at this point. 
Um, and I've seen stuff there and, you know, I had an EVP down there. I asked if it was tranquil. Uh, if anybody watches my show and knows that I tend to, to mumble, uh, it's just how I am. And tranquil did not come out right. Uh, so the first response we got on the EVP was yes. And the second one is no, it's tranquil. Uh, I looked at the rest of the folks around the campfire and I said, I'm done with EVPs. I turned the recorder off. I walked back in the house. I had, handed Jack out of the, the recorder and I said, play this out to everybody. And everybody just kind of looked and went, did it just say, no, it's tranquil. Okay. That's what I thought it said. And that's enough. And, <laughs> you know. But I've seen a lot of weird stuff come out of that house. And they've got, you know, hug stuff there. They've got, we've heard Bigfoot screams, you know, you know, unless it's in front of you, can't say it. But that type of screen, that Ohio howl coming out of the woods during a camping event. So it's, uh, it, it's definitely an interesting, and that was the end of the night. I was out standing at the car talking to some other investigators. That screen came out and the folks that were camping out on a property come running the corner like, Mike. Do you do a Bigfoot? It wasn't me. So. so the Hinsdale house is located where? In Hinsdale, New York, down near right. Jamestown. Awesome. See, I've never been to New York at all. I think we need to get up there. Sometime. Well, the nice thing about New York is, you know, everybody thinks New York City, and it, it's not that way. You start where I'm at, I'm, kind of, I'm in the Finger Lakes region, which uh, large biodiversity, a lot of fishing, a lot of, a lot of hills. Um, excuse me, to an hour to our west, you have Niagara Falls, Lake Erie, four hours to the other side of the state, you have the Adirondack State, you know, uh, Adirondack State Forest. And eight hours away, I just want to confirm from where I'm at, eight hours away is New York City. I'm closer to Toronto than I am to uh, to New York City. So there's such a diverse uh, locations of different things that you really can do. Uh, Western New York, we have a lot of wonderful locations for, for paranormal investigations. Great for looking for cryptids or just getting out and hiking, relaxing, and fishing. So, Gotcha. Well, that sounds great. You sound like a tour guide. <laughs> Is that something you also do on the side then or what? Uh, no, but uh, as you know, the, the biggest part of this journey um, is some of the locations I've got to go to. Uh, I had a long talk with, with one of my, my research guys and some of the other folks that I've been in the woods with. You know, there's always the background when you hear the stories about Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, whatever. It's always seems to be some sort of protector of the forest, protector of the woods. And if you're going to be out doing this investigation, you're out um, really looking for protecting the woods, protecting the... Uh, the so you're, you're looking for some wonderful places. The places that I have been are absolutely amazing. I've been to the location of the uh, the uh, trail cam footage there from Vermont, um, and that's just an absolutely amazing place. Uh, Frank's place is, is just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Also, nobody's going to sneak on that property. You'd be absolutely crazy. But going to the Adirondack State Forest, uh, you guys, if everybody gets a chance, to see, when Seth's new movie comes out from Small Town Monsters, the footage that you're going to see in that of the Anaheim State Forest is absolutely amazing. I got to spend some time with Seth and his crew during the filming of that. Um, and even if you watch the trailers, it's just Adirondacks are amazing. The area I'm in, absolutely amazing. The valleys, the trout streams. So going out, yeah, looking for cryptids, but you got to take in the nature that's around you, take in the energy that's around you, and, and, and you got to give back. So, Jenna, you're muted still. So, oh, I know. I'm just trying to be quiet so I can listen. Yeah. Not so, speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just going. Yes, yes. Okay. So sorry. I'm just, I think it's wonderful. Um, you know, I I do remember. I think there's going to be a break coming up very very soon. So I'll ask the question when we come back, Jen. If All that's right. what you want me to. Do. <laughs> Why don't you ask the question and we'll give him time to think about it. 
Oh, well, it's about your seek. We also have a seek. And I was just wondering your favorite things about the seek and your not so favorite things about the seek. Okay. That is a good question. So we're, yeah. with that, we're going to go to break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Awesome. So we're on break. Um, happy birthday, Jenna. Hey, happy right. birthday hey. to you. <laughs> Jenna, you, we're Mike. not singers. You I sing. was getting ready to sing. Okay, oh, I was just going to say it would be. But I didn't want to break anybody's you. ears. So. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, just forget it. Don't birthday. sing. Just have these gals do it. Then. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <gasps> I could do my happy birthday. Day, Mr. President. I'm, you, you can call me President. Madam President. <laughs> yes. No, it's been a wonderful birthday. And like, you know, Jen was trying to convince me that I was a year older than I was because last year I was telling everybody that sure. I was as old as I am now. So well, I've, I've eventually well, just you added are this box. old now. I mean, <laughs> you have to expect a couple of little lines, Jenna. I mean, it's going to show up and. She's like, I am not that old. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, Mike, it's easy for you men because men seem to get more handsome and women seem to age. We, Our lines are not as distinguished and, and you know. I just don't smile so oh. I don't end up with wrinkles. <laughs> I just learned that a long time ago. I, like I just right stay now. with the resting, you know, and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a thousand. Yeah, we're just going to go with that. So. You're so not the resting phase. 30 seconds. All right, I'm going to mute, guys. Go. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Hey, we're the She Squatchers. Won't you check us out online at SheSquatchers.com? Click on our events page. We haven't updated yet because we have a new announcement. We're going to be at the Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference in July. We were announced this week as one of the featured speakers. So I have to upload, up, update our event page on our website. So check it out, shesquatchers.com. You're going to find us next month in April at the Nebraska Bigfoot Conference. Come see us there if you can. I do see that they might even have a Zoom option coming up. So if they can get that set up with the computer folks in time, that's going to be an option too. So if you can't come in person, which we would love to see you in person, it's an outdoor event underneath the big pavilion that has no walls so lots of fresh air uh come see us out there uh and then you can find us on youtube please come subscribe to our channel we're still in a race for subscribers with another youtuber and we need to win we need to win so we need all the subscribers we can get so come subscribe to our youtube channel at she squatchers official then you can come over to Facebook and Instagram. Find us there at She Squatchers Official as well. That's where all, all of our up-to-date, most want to know what's going on with us is going to be there. So tonight we've got Mike Allen with us. We're really, really, Mike Allen and with us. And <laughs> I've got a tongue to a tongue. Uh, I can't talk right now. What's going on? I just tried to sing and it just tongue twisted me. <laughs> I've never heard you have a problem with twisting of tongues. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Anyway, it's Jenna's birthday. Her mojo's got me. I sang today, and that's probably what did it. I am not a singer. I'm a backup dancer. So <laughs> everybody knows that who's heard me sing. So, hey, I'm a backup dancer, not a singer. Don't make me sing or my tongue gets all twisted up later. Anyway, so before we went to the break, Jenna asked a question about the Seek thermal device because Jenna also has one. She wants to know Mike's thoughts on that. Uh, it's where I started out. Um, actually, got it right here with me. You know, it's it, I have the one for for the Droid. Um, it was great. Uh, I like using it for paranormal investigations because you can go from tablet to phone, but then. 
you know, they went and switched from micro USB to micro C. So then you got to put the adapters on. And if you are in a, um, uh, we won't call it a foot chase, but uh, if you are going through the woods pretty quickly and you try to throw the phone into your tactical pocket or your backpack, uh, there's a little problem. You, uh, and I run a little sling bag when I go out. Um, you tend to end up bending the uh, the connections. Um, I like it better than uh, its competitor. Um, that way I don't put anybody down. Um, because the competitor has to be plugged in on its own power. And then plugged into the phone. So you're worried about charging your phone, charging the unit. And they both have their, their pluses and their minuses. The competitor has a wonderful locking device that keeps it in. Um, but with the, uh, the, the Seek, I, I found it's great. It's also wonderful if you've got a bunch of team members with you and you got somebody new, you can hand them the, uh, the, uh, the Seek and uh, they can plug it into their phone as long as you're not a an iPhone user, or they have one for iPhone as well, but uh, most of my team I found and most of the investigators go out with the use Droid stuff. So we can hand it back and forth and we can kind of share that back and forth. It makes it really nice. Um, but I upgraded from that and ended up going with the, uh, the big ATN uh, thermal spotting scope. And this is my, uh, my go-to for just about everything in the field. Um, it's Bluetooth, it's Wi-Fi, you know, I, I can run a hardware to it and run cameras so I can run it with my night vision hooked together. So I'm looking at the same stuff at the same time. So, yeah, I, 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 I can talk all night. I, like I said, the Seek was the first thing, and uh, they've, they've got some good customer service. I was going to build in some of my own models, and I talked to their folks. They're really nice. They actually have their own kits that you can try building your own if you want. So I have a question about the Seek. Have you noticed anything in particular different with that versus the FLIR? Like, how, could it see through clothing? I wouldn't say that it as much. It actually does. As... <laughs> <laughs> and I, when Jenna got her got her seek, she was so excited to show it to me. And we were at a conference, so she turns off all the lights in the hotel room. We're in our pajamas, and she hands me the seek, and she says, Jen, just look at me. And look how good this is. And I looked at her and I'm like, Jenna, I can see everything underneath your nightgown. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you cannot. And I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, Jen, I've got to take a picture. You've got to see this. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. <laughs> you can, especially if your body is extremely warm, you know, you can, it's very detailed. But see, we have uh, the handheld. Now, now you have Wait, something different. Are you turning red? <laughs> No, I was out. I was oh, out in the my. sun all day oh. on, on an airboat. So no, I'm not turning red. That is uh, my face from being in the sun all day. I'm, I'm working in little. South Florida, <laughs> looking for skunk ape this week on family vacation. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> but prior to the handheld units coming out, uh, they had the uh, the phone mountable units. So I would like to have one of the uh, the handhelds because you could just throw it in your pocket. Um, but I'm just trying to decide which way I'm going to go because there's some other units that are out there that actually outline, um, which I really like. Um, but you're looking, you know, you try to keep yourself, uh, what am I looking for? Self-financed in this field, unless you have your own TV show. And uh, I uh, tend to hide in the shadows. Uh, Jen, with the, the mess up with the name, don't worry about it. That's why I was tactical before research for as long as I was, because I didn't want anybody to know who I was. So I was always just Mike. And actually, uh, my co-host has me hashtag most of the time as just Mike. So thanks, Christy, for that one. So, but yeah, I, I definitely like that. But I've gone to this. I've gone to the ATN. This is my my um, my monster that goes with me everywhere. And I've got some ten minutes of bare footage on that thing. It's absolutely amazing. So. So Sherry is in the chat room and she is asking, are task cam recorders good for recording Bigfoot? I do not have a task cam yet. That a buddy of mine bought one for me and COVID hit. Um, 
And with his job, he wasn't allowed to go with anybody. So there is a brand new task cam in his car right next to my hair sample um, that he's been trying to bring to me in person. So I, I bought him a dash cam and two weeks later he got me a task cam. So uh, I run a, a small Sony uh, because it fits on the backpack. So everything goes on the backpack. It has its own little like magazine pouch. You'd have a pistol. And then I run stereo speakers that hook into the back of the backpack. And then I live listen like we would with a parent. Again, here's here's your crossover for paranormal. I live listen. So when you're walking down the the through the woods, I can listen right and left on either side of me. So if something's parallel to me and on either side, I can hear it. It's wonderful unless you're out with a friend and they find something cute and cuddly in the woods and they scream at the top of their lungs and you think a bear is chasing you down. I had that happen with another investigator, found a cute little newt in the middle of the Adirondack State Forest and screamed. I threw my earbuds out and started looking for my bear spray and all it was was a little teeny tiny newt, which was cute, but not good when you're listening. But that will allow you to pick things up as you're live listening and you don't have to go back three hours later and listen to everything. I do not have a task cam, but I would love to, to have one because I've actually gotten to use one out in the field. Um, we, I, there's a local paranormal group here that asked me to go big, to, not bigfooting, ghost hunting with them uh, just outside of town. And it ended up being on the edge of the woods. And I'm like, this is so squatchy. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, their task cam, I was really impressed at what it could pick up from pretty far away. I was really, I want one of those. Anyway, so we've got someone in the chat room who I think you know, and she's asking, what is the difference between a structure built by Bigfoot or another animal? Well, again, you got to be there and watch it build it to really decide what it's going to be. Um, I'm not jumping on that bandwagon. I've seen some stuff that kind of that goes, you know, I've talked to Shane and some of the guys out on the, on the West Coast and uh, seen their uh, their PowerPoint. You know, um, I, I'm not a really big tree structure guy. So, uh, some of the tree breaks and stuff that I've seen. Yeah. Uh, OK, how does that go? But then I'm not a big print guy either. Impressions where we're at, the substrate doesn't doesn't provide for a good, good print. And, and that's, and that's another thing is how many folks are using 3d scanners when they're out looking for prints, because do you have a double bear print? Uh, I'm running uh, a, a 3d scanning app on my phone until I can afford a 3d scanner because you can get more definition around what's in the ground. And you can also 3d scan the whole area. So, those are things that, you know, my group does a little different. So, you know, you did find a tree breaker, you did find a structure. Are you taking pictures of the whole area around it? You know, everybody's saying, hell, yeah, I find a bunch of sticks stuck up everything. Are you taking pictures of the top of the trees in a 20 foot radius around that thing to make sure it's not a, a, a snow blow over ice melt or, you know, a micro burst that came through. So, some of the tree structures, I'm, I'm not, I, there's some stuff I've seen though. Again, click it, save it, it goes into a file. Keep that file, it's a documentation. Then if you see it somewhere else, you can go back. The same thing with the sounds, you know, there's a lot of great folks using a lot of great software that's, that's available to you. That's why when I run thermal, I also run a night vision camera. Boy, that doesn't work with this. That's interesting. With my background, it doesn't wanna work. So mount these things together in a tripod so I can watch both night and thermal at the same time. What kind Actually, of night vision camera do you have? I'm running uh, one of the Bushnells, one of the Equinoxes. It's a couple of years old, uh, but we just switched over and we've got a Psyonix in the team now, which is color night vision. And it's the size of the small uh, PBS 14 night visions, like the helmet mounts. And it's uh, it gives you twilight, daylight, uh compass gps you can send it to your teammates it was designed as a tactical night vision and they're really really reasonable really reasonably priced how much are they yes 
third i think the last time i saw cyanix advertise their base models like 400 dollars or something like that up to like a grand for their top end weapons mountable unit and uh my buddy's got one and we run with this i mean this is digital so i get some color but nothing like that does i mean it's it's like being there. You get a little bit of blue hue, but you don't get that that green. And it's got the full audio. They're 10, 1080p, I think. So they're coming up. I think the base is like 720. Uh, but it's it's really, really nice. And it fits in a pocket. And it turns off. So if you carry it around your neck and you put it down flat, it's off when you come back on. It's got a gravity switch and it turns back on. So you're not worried about turning it back on and battery power and everything like that. Okay. So. We know what our next purchase will be, guys. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Um, Jenna's Hellba- Miss Pig Bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. They're, you know, uh, how, about, how about Howler to give them a, a, a shout out? Um, they've got some video of it where they're using it down in uh, South Carolina in the woods. And you, you're like, boy, it's the middle of the day. And they're like, no, it's 10 o'clock. And then my Jesse's husband turns to him and they, no, he's using a regular old-fashioned night vision, and it's the old green, and you're like, oh, no, you know. I mean, I still have an old generation or first-generation Russian night vision that you got to push the button on the side and get it to warm up and dance around in circles, but it's there as a backup. All right. So uh, another question from the chat room. How do you select the locations in which you want to do some research in? I will, uh, you know, I'll Google what's, what other folks may have seen and what might be in the local newspapers. I'll reach out to a couple of folks that their specialty is research. Um, then I have two biologists on my team, which really helped, that have gone out and found different species that have thought of being, you know, out of the area. I wouldn't say sink, but just not in the area. Um, talking to those old-time researchers um that were there back in the beginning you know what where they went but looking at the different structure what is the food source what is the area where are the waterways i'm big into looking for swamps rivers pine forests next to swamps um you know what what's what's in those areas and again like i said we've got a couple other little um checkoff boxes to hit um and uh for those that might have read like robert morgan's book or something like that and he really talks about you know looking at things of how you're going to move through the woods and, and one of my guys had a, a two-week run-in in south america with something down there where he was up close and personal so what what the experience is and again it, it's it's looking at what is the structure where you're going where are those historical sightings what is in the lore i mean right now we're working on some stuff that's uh in the the county lore that went back to the late 1700s late 1700s early 1800s where those creatures are listed in that book published in 1800s which is kind of crazy and following that particular group they end up in west virginia and we talk to the folks down there and end up with Mothman and a whole, you just, you know, right turn, you know, and squirrel. So. That's awesome. So, uh, Jenna, you have to have a question. Oh, I've got plenty of questions. I'm just trying to let him speak because he's a very good speaker. And I thought, wow, I'm kind of impressed. I'm just going to let him keep going. I'll shut myself off and let you guys (laughs) go. I'm in shock right now. I don't know what else to say. I know it's a, it's a new me. It's a new year. It's a new me. I, uh, I'm watching, you know, how much I talk. So I do <laughs> know kidding. how much you talk. <laughs> oh, girl, I know how you, how much you talk to and together we would, Oh, we would be so annoying. <laughs> All right. So let's give Tammy a chance. Oh, what are you talking yeah. about? Annoying. <laughs> no, if both of us were together in like a specific place and we both a talked car. at the same time, or yeah, or a car. Oh no, she's saying something <laughs> about a road trip. <laughs> no, we have time. Oh my gosh, we always do, unless I'm in the backside back seat sleeping and you guys are sneaking pictures of my twisted body. <laughs> That's always fun. 
Oh my goodness. Well, if, if you've ever gone on road trips, Mike, you know how you just have a blast. You know, you've got stuff in the back seat and you've got to make yourself adjust. Well, I was back there. I was so tired. And, and uh, these guys were taking cute little pictures of my body. My arms were down by my legs and or up by my, and it's just like, whoa. But yeah, as far as questions, I've got a lot of them. So um, now, how long did you say you were doing this? I've been in it uh, about five years at this point. So yeah, I came into it later than mo than most people. You know, yeah, you, you saw the in search of and stuff like that. Like I said, it was through the newspaper articles. And then uh, I was out with some surgery, um, which really kind of pushed things in and why I was doing the research. And I came across, you know, Seth Breed loves uh, Beast of Whitehall and all the law enforcement sightings. And again, having that background and that first initial individual talking to me who is a law enforcement official about the stuff that he saw. Um, so I got to give kudos to my boy Seth there. And, you know, his, his, his films kind of helped uh, give it a little a little push. So and then meeting him in person and he was at Chautauqua Lake. So it's just it's all that whole universe coming together, you know. Um, what does your family think of you doing paranormal research and Bigfoot research? Uh, that's a, uh, it's an interesting, uh, spin. Uh, they've been pretty supportive. Um, it's a way for me to get away from my day to day and, uh, you know, get out. It's, it's something different, you know, and, uh, they're, they're pretty, pretty supportive. I've taken my niece and nephew with me. Um, you know, I took my mom for her first Bigfoot trip through the URI the other day and, um, and left her in the car with my wife for a little bit. And, you know, it was like, OK, yeah, I'm going to be out in the woods by myself here. Um, you know, I, I'm, I travel a little bit, you know, and, and like I said, I got a, a, a great team. Um, even, the, you know, one that's in a while, even the guys at work are like, hey, can you, you know, take us along or whatever? They're on for the adventure. Um but a lot of them are ghost people, a lot of them are Bigfoot people. So, and some are energy healers, you know. And so, like my co-host and I both do that, you know. And Jen and I, you and I talked the other day, you know. And we do um, energy work. I worked with some folks that teach down at the the Munner Institute. So, bring family along for that kind of stuff. That sounds like fun. Yes, Jenna. I actually have another question about, um, you said you're a, a recovery dry diver. Doggone it, I can't say that word either. So thanks, Jen. You gave it to me. Um, anyway, w when you were a, d a recovery diver, um, you know, I kind of interrupted that whole thing because I was like, oh my gosh, I thought about the stories that my father-in-law had told me and how, you know, there's flashbacks back there. Have you ever had to, um, experienced any kind of not so nice things under the water yes okay yep nothing yep. yeah have you had any uh, paranormal experiences under the water i've seen some things oh have you i've seen you some it. things can you talk about it no i can't That's okay. so yeah it, it's uh you're there and it it is there but uh the one in particular we we had a pretty good debrief after so um yeah again you're bringing closure um you, you kind of you can feel the relief in the family once you once you take care of that well going off on a different route doing the diving i you know there's a lot of uh talk about uh, ufos in the air unidentified unidentified flying objects of course in the air but what about the unidentified submerged objects have you encountered any of those in your diving i have not uh the whole uso ufo thing is new to me uh i, I was uh, a very black and white person now i'm into the gray area um i actually had a friend who i didn't even think was down the path took me up with the local mufon group in facebook uh you know we're interviewing folks on this topic uh i just had a friend that was part of the cinematographer for the new phenomenon uh movie that just released and watching that and sitting with david in the middle of the desert in vegas for a photo shoot a couple of years ago 
with friends from Naked and Afraid. I have, my friends are all over the place. But him talking about the journey through Africa and the stuff he's seen there and some of the research. And then we, we've interviewed some folks. So, yeah, it's I'm getting there. Then there's supposed to be quite a few sightings near me for the UFOs but and USOs. So. Well, those are always interesting for me. Uh, and I know that you mentioned puckwudgies earlier. Have you encountered any puckwudgie activity? I have not, um, but uh, I was part of a group last week, and we talked about the little creatures, so I did start doing the research on the guys in my area. I, I have seen some trail cam footage from, from that Hinsdale house where they've got them, so uh, I've been told you just don't mention them. So <laughs> that's something we've kind of had that discussion about. So... Um, but yeah, I started looking at that because I'm looking into the local lore in the area. Okay, interesting. interesting. Traditions, there's actually. There's only a few more minutes, um, but I was going to ask you, go ahead and tell everybody what you suggest. Like if they're, if they're going out and looking for Bigfoot um, or even paranormal, what can they do as maybe even a new, oh, there's a balloons again. Happy birthday, squirrel. Jen, you did it. You knew that would happen. <laughs> um, anyway, you guys figure out what the question was. Now all I can think is a balloons. <laughs> I'm serious. Help me with my question. <laughs> you can't uh, put balloons up and not think I'm going to forget. Anyway, what advice would you give to people out there who are looking for Bigfoot and uh, paranormal? I mean, as far as equipment, anything. Uh, I'll do it really, really quick. Uh, get yourself a good notebook. Get yourself a good recorder. Get a recorder that actually picks up that stuff in the background, not that noise-canceling stuff. I had a long talk with Ron Moorhead about the original stuff they did on Sierra, and you know, a lot of these new digital recorders will kill that noise in the background so you think oh i hear stuff like you watch all the tv shows now and you don't hear anything because everything's mentioned to pick up your voice and not the wonderful cracking in the background um take a cpr course get a good first aid kit take a tourniquet take a flashlight learn how to survive my little sling bag has a knife it has a tourniquet it has a thermal camera it has fire starters it's got you know Hair collection, tweezers, small, you know, uh, paper, because you don't want to collect it, the uh, biological samples in plastic because it'll degrade. Listen to what, what's out. The folks that are doing the actual research, go to your local zoo, watch what's going on. But just enjoy being out there and document everything. Document everything. The digital camera comes with me. The thermal cameras come with me. The the little GoPros go, you know, or, you know, the knockoffs go with me. Document, 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 and go back and keep a log. Keep your running log so you can see that stuff is there. There's so much more, but <laughs> there's so much technology. I could do three, four shows on technology. Well, we've got less than a minute left. Why don't you tell people how they can find you online if you wish to be found? You can find me at Tactical Bigfoot Research on Facebook, Instagram, and you can find me at on Where's My Sage, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, WLFEDB.com. Um, we're everywhere. Our podcast is on Spreaker, Spotify, Apple, iTunes. That's the Where's My Sage. Oh, and the YouTube is up now for uh, Tactical Bigfoot Research as well. That's fantastic. Well, I hope that at some point we can be going up to New York and hanging out with you and and uh, looking at some of these awesome places that I haven't been to before. And I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight and uh, hope you'll come back on when you have more to share another time. And I'd like to say happy birthday one more time to Miss Jenna. And happy I'm glad birthday. she's back. Thank you. I'm thank you. And she's back. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Bye, everybody. everybody.